Hello everyone, I'm T Junkie and welcome back to another tutorial. In this tutorial what we're going to be doing is creating a whole new menu system for a game. This is a menu I created just for a uh, just for a, a project but we're going to be creating something similar to this now if I click play right as you can see the fading in background might have missed it I'll do it again as you see I see a background fade in similar to say how all the source games do it um, down on the left here you have your navigation which is animated if you click play game you see new game here you got the back button here that's animated you've also got hovering here which is different save slots now if I go back uh, you've got achievements you can scroll with your click and scroll or you can just scroll with your mouse wheel and in settings which this is why I'm gonna have multiple for each, so first lesson is going to be creating the main here, which you've got your name, you've got a background, you've got uh, the fading in, and I'm also going to set up these buttons here. In another video after this one, we're going to be setting up the animations. I might put it in this video as well. If I click settings, you've got the audio settings here with your apply button down here you've got video you've got your resolution shows your resolution options and uh, what max hertz your monitor can go up to I've got standard quality here you've got vsync on or off you've got full screen in advanced if I click display FPS you can see my FPS here now this is I believe The, uh, what the um, thing the this goes up to because this window here has a limiter on it, F FPS limiter on it, even if it says it doesn't, because I'm actually getting way more FPS. So this actually does display the correct FPS if you build a standalone. Um, and controls here, and these are fully rebindable controls. So move forward. I have this P at the moment, but if I push this W, it puts this W click apply and it will actually save it. Uh, display FPS, basically a toggle. Uh, you've got your audio sliders here. And in the advanced, say here, you can have um, what we did last time here. You can have this in the advanced menu. It's entirely up to you. Um, but this is, we're going to be just teaching you the layout. How to lay out everything so it scales its screen. As you can see, it's scanning the screen. This will be black. Up here will be black. Uh, 3, 2, 16, 9, 16, 10, uh, 4, 3. Oh, I'm 16, 9, and I. And you can set your quality settings, of course, like I said. Um, this here will display the resolutions only, you sc only your screen can accept. Um, so if you want to test out, see if it goes up to more, um, you'll need a different monitor. So I can go here and I can click 16 thing and then click apply. It won't do anything because it's determined by the monitor here. But if I was to run this in a standalone, which I believe if I click, actually I just build it. Just build. Are you going to build or are you going to just crash out on me? <sighs> oh, you are building.
Let's launch it. Hopefully this comes in recording. If I go settings, as you notice at the moment, I'm in a window. If I go to video and I say I'm full screen, and then actually before I go full screen, let's change resolution. And then let's try and get the apply button. There we are. Managed to get the apply button. Change resolution again. To actually, we'll click full screen this time. Just click apply, and it looks like a blurry, a blurry mess. Now I'm going to go up to my max resolution. I can go up to. I'm not 4K, but for some reason it says I am. If I go to advanced and display FPS, it displays the correct FPS like I mentioned. If I go to video and I click VSync and I apply that, I'm down to 240 FPS. Disable VSync, I'm back up to 1370. So the VSync button does work, the full screen button works. Um, controls, W here. Oh, I don't want to press it, I don't want to do that. Um, You've got your volumes here. I don't have any music here, but something you can put in. You've got to quit. This is basically what we're going to be making in our project. That's a lot of talk and faff, so let's get into it. First thing we want to do is create a new scene. Let's go to this main menu. And let's load that scene. Uh, main camera, we're going to need directional light. We don't need that. And if we go into, if I right click UI panel, click the canvas again, I'm going to scale the screen size 1920 by 108. That way it scales like I've mentioned before. And now this panel here is going to be the, if it lets me rename it, the main options panel actually I don't want to do that main menu panel and I'm actually gonna have this yes yeah, stretched all the way now inside and I'm gonna disable the image on this one or just remove the image actually and now underneath that I'm gonna create a new panel and this is gonna be main menu options panel and this is going to be stretched but from the actually I'm going to have it stretch vertically on the left and its width I'm going to have what's a good width about here should be good so for 400 is that all right no 430 or oh, no, actually 450 and then from the left, zero, and then you want it 225. And now with that in there, I'm just going to duplicate this one. I'm actually going to have this stretch the whole panel. However, it's going to be in the middle here. Now this panel here, we are going to take out of this. So I'm going to create a new one, UI panel and I'm just going to call this the new game panel. We are not going to use this just yet as panel um, but we are going to, I've just set this up literally so we can use this and this again. So if I duplicate this, drag them in there, delete this one and this one here is going to be the menu name panel and this one here is going to be the it's going to be the menu uh, the main the first one is going to be new game isn't it so this one is going to be the player profiles panel and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to minimize that and I'm going to just disable that 
and the reason being is this panel here we're going to duplicate a lot a lot of times so i'm going to have achievements so that's going to be achievements i'm going to have settings so it's going to be settings as well um i'm just going to name this one to achievements panel and i'm just going to rename this one to settings panel and that way you've basically got the same layout now in this one here i don't actually want the image on this one either so I'm going to remove it. Now we've just got an empty box, which is our container for our options. Now this one here, I don't want it all the way at the top. So what I am going to do is I am going to say minus from the top 500. And that should be fine. The main reason is we are going to have a title that's here. So here's where we're going to have all of our buttons. And here's where we're going to have the title. Um, I'm going to put a button up here for update log so people who come to think and click and see the update. Down here, right at the bottom though, we are going to have a copyright. So at the bottom, we are going to minimize this by 200. Is that too high? I think I'm going to be too high. 100. Basically, you're just segmenting off at the moment. So I know this can hold all the buttons. The reason why I have this in a panel is so when I can right click this panel, actually, not right click it. If I click here, Vertical layout group, padding of, I don't want any left and right padding. So the top and the bottom padding I'm going to have is actually, no, 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 child alignment, middle center. I don't think we're going to mess with this at all. We're going to have to see how it looks, but I'm not going to mess with this at all. So what I'm going to do is control child size width. And if I right click in here, then click UI, then I can click a uh, button, which is Text Mesh Pro. And as you can see, yeah, that lines up fine. The button, on the other hand, I'm going to have is 50. Um, I'm not going to need the image for now. We're going to be animating this. Actually, I'm going to bring in some images from my other project, I think. Do, 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 do. I've got to find it first. I'm going to put it in here. Uh, where did it go? Actually, it might be better to clean this up a bit. So I'm going to create a folder for UI. And then the UI I'm going to put in here. I'm going to create a folder for scripts. I'm going to put the scripts in here. And these are just models and materials. So let's create two folders for models and materials. And another one. Materials. Now these are the models. That's a prefab. But I'm just going to drag this in the models for now. Material. And I'm going to create another one for textures. And then now we have a nice organized. Now in my UI, I have a button background. So this button is going to use the background. Oh, it's not a sprite. So what I'm going to do is click it, click sprite to the UI, and I'm going to click apply. And the button, the background, is going to be this. However, we're not going to have it show it up all the time. It is going to be animated. So what we are going to do is set up the button a little bit first. Now, I wasn't going to go across the animation this episode, but I think it might be a good idea to do that. Because if we're going to just copy and paste all the buttons in a line, like, say, I've got this button here. I just want three more buttons like that. Well, you know, you get the point. Although, for some reason, I need to disable that. Doo -doo -doo. I'm not going to force expand the height. That way they stick together. And I think the buttons are a bit small anyway. So, let's delete them. Now, the button is a bit too small, so what I'm going to do is going to have this as 60. Actually, it might look a bit too small because of the text. Now, I'm just going to use the standard text for this, that 
Texas Pro Show. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say you're white with a shadow underneath you. Let's add a shadow. Is it underlay? It's not outline. Extra settings. I think it is underlay. There's an underlay. Uh, 0.1. Uh, 0.3. That's a lot, yeah. 0.3. Uh, it's going to be minus because I want it underneath. There you go. Actually, no underlay. I'm just going to have the outline on it. And I'm going to have the thickness as one. Oh, 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 that's way too bad. 0.1. Uh, no, no, no. We're going to have the underlay. The underlay. Not going to mess around with that. We're going to auto size the text. And then. If I click game, it does look alright for now. It's just a standard text, which is the problem. I need to change this. What's this text? Anyway, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rename this to New Game. Now, um, the problem is we've got this button. It's got the background. So what we are going to do is we're going to change it to animation. You need to remember these norm number these names. Sorry, not numbers. You have to remember these num uh, names. For the simple fact of the animate the when you're doing a um, trigger, the trigger needs to be called that. So what you need to do after you've said all oh, the animation is going to be it, what you want to do is you want to add another component for the front animator. For the controller, what we are going to do is we're going to right click, create a new folder, animations. Inside this folder, we are going to create a new folder for UI. Now, in this here, what we're going to do, oh, I need something to drink, um, my throat's a bit, a bit weird, we're going to create a new animation, animated controller, and we're just going to call this um, side button anim controller, and then in our button, we're just going to drag this in there, into the controller. Now once the, we've got the controller, now if we select the button, what we are going to do is we're going to open a new window. So what we're going to do is click window, um, animation, animation. And what we're going to do is we're going to animate the button. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new animation and we're just going to call this normal button animation and this normal button animation we're going to add a we're going to with the um, texture is going to be the sprites going to be off the image is going to be off and there's going to be nothing it's just the animation animation the image the animation image it's just going to be off so what we can do is we can set we can kind of add property image enabled tick that and then tick that off and then we're going to drag this down to five seconds and click the top here so it selects that in the timeline and click that off. And that's the first animation done. Believe it or not. Now we're going to create a new clip and we're going to call this one hover animation. So hover button, not button. Button hover, uh, uh, hover button anim. Now what we're going to do is in this property, the image enabled to begin with is going to be on, and to be in the end it's going to be on. So depending on how long we want our animation to drag out, so I'm going to drag this to five seconds. I don't see this being a problem. So on hover, we're going to it's going to turn the animation on. It's going to stay on at the end, and at the end, what we are going to do, sorry is we're going to make this text here move to the right a little. So to do that, add another property, text, rec transform, 
and we are gonna do position actually the easiest way of doing this actually is just to click the record button click the text the text was pro and say left hand side uh, not 10 30 or 30 40 I do it say seems like it moves enough so now if I turn off that and I click play it's just gonna spaz but that's because the animations turn on it's looping now what we're gonna do is after this we're gonna create a new clip and I'm gonna call this disabled button anim and then I'm just gonna add a property image enabled is off and we're gonna have this five seconds as well and then here we're gonna have this off um, and the button I think on the text add property the text and we're gonna have the color of the text color or color mode I'm just gonna have I'm going to record it quickly. The text. And the vertex color of the text, I'm going to have the alpha down. So it's like this. And then when I get to. I'm going to stop recording. I'm going to click this keyframe. I'm going to copy this keyframe. Control C, then here, Control V. So it's the same across. So it's disabled. Um, we also need to create another one. Call it selected button anim. And what I'm going to do for the selected button is I'm just going to have. I'm just going to say that the image enabled is true. I'm going to grab this keyframe here and put it down to five. And then what I am also going to do is I'm going to have the um, the text. I'm going to hit the record button again. The text I'm going to have it left 30. So it's ex <coughs> it's exactly the same, and it holds this exactly the same as when you hover over it. And now I'll record this. Now we've got. Now what we've got is pressed. Now the pressed one. I'm just going to say pressed. <coughs> the press button anim. What I'm going to do for the press button is I'm going to leave this one blank. Because when it's been pressed, I want it to go back to the way the normal, the way the normal position with the text, the um, the background on, where the way it looks right here. So I'm going to do nothing for it. I'll just create the animation. Now, once you've created all the animations, you want to go to your side button controller, and then we see here. Now, what we want to do is I'm going to organize this a little bit better. Now, I want any state above it. And then I'm just going to say press this here, hovers here, disabled here, and I'm going to do select it next to the press right there. Now, I'm not going to do anything here. What I need to do is I need to create a new trigger, and this is going to be called normal. Create a new trigger called pressed. So these triggers need to identically match the names you've got here. So if I create a new trigger, highlighted. Create a new trigger, disabled, and create a new trigger, um, selected. Now with these triggers collect, uh, uh, created, we don't need to do anything else with this now. So what we want to do is want to have, from any state, you want to make a transition. You want to make a transition to there. If it lets me, it's not going to let me. 
No, yeah, never mind. Sorry, I was clicking the wrong button. If I right click any state, click manage transition to button. Right click, make transition, and do this for all of them. And now what we want to do is say this here is any state to the disabled. What we are going to do is going to say it doesn't it, no it doesn't have any exit time, doesn't have a fixed duration, and do transition duration. I'm just going to say zero. And then what we're going to do is then click this one as well. Do the same. Doesn't have a fixed duration. Disable it. Same here. Doesn't have a fixed duration. Same. Here and there's another fixed duration. And now what I'm going to do is on here any state to the disabled button, I'm going to add in the condition that needs to be disabled. And I'm going to do that going around the whole area. Pressed. Hover. And this is the highlighted is hover. And then this normal, I'm just going to say normal. I'm not entirely sure why it's got so many normal, normal, normal. Oh, I know why. Why has it got so many? There we go. I needed to change that. Normal button to normal button because it knows the entry is the normal button here. Now with this done, we are going to go to our animations here. Now for the disabled, we're going to leave loop time on. For hover, we're going to turn it off. Normal, leave it on. Pressed, turn it off. Selected, loop. That way, when we hover on uh, an object, we don't want it to continually go through the animation like looping like it was before we just want it to play once and that's it and when it's played its duration because we're still on hover it's going to end on the last keyframe now if I click the button again go back into my scene and then click play it's you see it's got nothing I hover over it and then I leave it What's that? Sidebar controller to any state. No button and then in state any state doesn't have an exit time or any condition. Did I not add the condition to that? Oh, I didn't add the condition to it. There we go. If I click play, hover over it, get off it. Hover over it, get off it. Press it. It loops because the pressed. I accidentally looped the pressed. Pressed. I didn't loop the pressed. Or did I loop the selected? Oh, I did loop the selected. Right, selected, not loop. <laughs> there we go. So only the two that should be looping are the disabled and the normal. As you can see, we've got the basic button in. Now, if we go into our button here and duplicate it three more times, and then this button here is going to be the animation button. Top button here is the new game button. Down here is going to be the settings button, and down here is going to be the quit button. Now all you need to do now is just rename, just basically change this. And the quit button, we're going to have quit. Now with that done, they're all using the same animation controller and the same animations, which is why I just duplicated these, this button so many times. Now, the text on here, I don't like how this the text looks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here, select all of these, and so the text is anchored to the left. <coughs> or not. Or not. No, I'll leave that for now, otherwise we have to edit my animations a little bit. But then what I'm going to do is when I click play, 
You can see this. They all work independently no matter what. This would have been much better if I'd lined up all the buttons to begin with on the text. So what I'm going to do is if you're on the same as me and you want them lined up on the edge here, just select all the text, click the alignment to the left and then what you want to do is on the text you want to have left is 40. So it's away from the edge. Now if you go run the animation now, you notice it bounces back and goes forward. And that's because, if I can go back onto there, and if I can hover over it and let it go, normal, the normal animation we notice we don't have to change, it's only when you hover it. So what I'm going to do is the hover animation, I'm going to add 30, I'm going to add 30 onto here. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, we have 40 onto here, so that's going to be 70. And then I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that animation alone. And then what I'm going to do is then exit off that one. And then I'm going to have the pressed animation. Oh yeah, that's nothing on there. Uh, selected animation. That's what I'm looking for. Now at the end here, I'm going to do the same here for 70. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back on here, click play. And then when you hover over them, they bounce again because apparently you didn't save. Work out why it's not doing it now. Why is it going from the left and shooting there? You might like this, but I don't. So, what I'm going to do is a text. What I'm going to do is, I think I might actually What I'm going to do is I'm just going to select all these Don't go back to them Normal spots, I am going to change this text like I did normally And here I'm just going to say left is 40 The left margin is 40 I wouldn't do this if I were you. Yeah, see, this does work if you do the left 40. It shoots forward a bit too much now, though, because of my animations. Because what it's doing is it's using the. If I go back to what I did before with the text, see this text here? If you change it in here, in the extra settings, Every time you put some text down, it's going to be margined on the left 40, yeah. which is what all, if, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's what will happen. So if I, menu options, if I right click this panel here, click UI, text, text mesh pro, and then I want to say it's the top left I want to anchor it to, I'm going to do 50, and then I'm going to do minus 50 at the top here, uh, I'm going to do quite a big one here, I'm going to do auto size here, and the max I'm going to do is 120. I'm going to call this, uh, no, I know some settings change across, so if you edit down here, in the actual material folder part of it, if you do the underlay, it will apply to all the text that you put on when you're using this font. So because when this extra settings on this is not been edited here, we can get away with it here. But what I'm going to do quickly, is on the pressed, oh not press selected, is it selected? Yeah, on the selected, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to put this back to minus 30. 
and on the hover I'm going to put this back to minus 30 as well and when I click play game I've got tutorial game the title here uh, no that's much cleaner now what I just need to do is minimize the main game options panel this is going to be the uh, game title and then down here we're going to create another UI text test which pro and this is going to be the copyright info and I'm just going to say this is down bottom left uh, zero zero and we're going to have it another we have it 10 from the not with 10 we have 10 from the left and 10 from the bottom I'm going to make this a bit bigger turn auto size back on and I'm going to drag this out to about here I don't think this needs to be too big and what I'm going to basically say is right got bright t joggy 2020 Now, now you know how to create animations, you can create the same for a button at the top right here. Now you can, I recommend doing it for the buttons at the top right here, uh, creating basically just another hover animation or whatever. Um, I'm going to show you how to quickly do that now. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a new button. So I'm going to create a UI button text press pro I'm going to anchor it to the top right and then I'm going to say it is 0 and then 0 and I'm going to put 10 minus 10 sorry and then minus 10 and this button size I'm going to make it a bit bigger I'm going to make it about that big um, width is 280 that will be big enough actually I don't think so maybe 400 height is going to be 75 I like whole numbers now if we go to the button text and then what we're going to do is we're going to have the same text we wanted and then what we're going to do is change that to white we're going to change the background to the button background oh, I'm on the text sense at the moment anyway button background to the button background we're going to change this to animation again it is interactable now the button on the text, I'm going to just click auto size for that one. I'm just going to say update news. Update news. And now what I'm going to do to begin with is I'm going to have a border on the edges of this text every time. So it's going to be f not 5, not 50, sorry, 5, 5, 5, 5. And it's going to be centered exactly how I said before. Now this one here in the game, it's going to look like that. Now what we're going to do is in the scenes, we are going to this. <coughs> sorry, uh, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this um, side button side button animations. And the UI, I'm going to create a new folder called controllers. I'm going to put the side button controller in here. And now what I'm going to do is create a new animation controller. I'm going to call this normal button, normal button controller. This is how I want all my buttons in my game to respond when I hover over them. This is why I'm saying it's normal. Now this button here, the same as before, add an animator on it. Drag the normal button controller onto the animator. And then we can get started. Now this button if I want it disabled I don't want this button to show up at all and the reason being is because if I want to disable a um, slot on like if we when we create a new game I want to disable this slot here because if nobody's put any information into it I want to have it disabled it's going to be completely invisible so what I'm going to do is with the button selected window animation animation now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new clip and I'm going to go into my animations UI and then I'm just going to create a new folder 
and I'm going to call this a uh, normal button normal button animations and then we need to create the five we had before and I'm going to say this is going to be normal anim and then I'm just going to say for normally I'm going to add a property the image on this one enabled there it is I'm going to have it disabled and then over here I'm going to have it disabled as well so I'm going to drag this one to five seconds it's going to be disabled now create a new clip hover on him add a property image enabled I am going to enable the uh, text the, the, the hover but I'm and then on the text add a property text I'm going to say the rec transform the scale so I'm going to add on the scale and on the scale I'm just going to say it's going to be one point uh, let's hover over this 1.1 1 .1. oh. actually I want it over here don't I so so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put point 0.1 point 0.1 so that's how big it's going to look so now if I disable, go back here and select on the timeline the correct timeline and then do it on the correct timeline so now the text, what's going to happen is the text is going to scale up by 0.1. So from here to here, it's going to scale up. That might scale up a bit too much to be fair. So what I'm going to do is I might do that. I might do this as a 0.05. Instead. You can play around with this to get the, the sort you want. And of course the image is on. Now I'm going to create a new animation, it's selected. Now I don't want this text to be massive when you select the button. I want this selection when you've selected the button, it go back to the normal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a property, the image, the enabled, it's true. Drag it back to five. On here, that's what I'm going to change. Is when it's selected, the it's true. The the and the scale of the text isn't changed. Create a new clip, uh, disabled. And then I'm just going to say the image on this enabled is off. I'm going to do this all the way to here as well. It's off on both of these. And then the text, I'm just going to go back into, I'm just going to click record, click the text, and then the vertex color. Actually, now I said before I was going to have it completely disabled, didn't I? So never mind. Uh, at the beginning, when it's completely disabled, I am going to add a property. Text is active. I'm going to have it off. So there's no text and there's no thing. And then what I'm going to do on here is add a property. Button interactable is off and it's off here. That's something we need to change in the other one as well. A disable button should be, it shouldn't be interactable. So this changes the interactable. And then the last animation I believe is pressed. So when it's pressed, I'm going to add I'm going to have enabled so the button is enabled. The button is enabled and it will stay enabled. However, at the end here I'm going to have the text, so add property, text, rec transform, and I'm going to do the scale again. And this time I'm going to have the scale here go down by, it's going to be naught, so it's 1, so it's going to be 0 0.95. So it goes down 0.5 in the other direction as well. So when you push the button, it shrinks. Now, with that done, those animations done, uh, same as before, we want to go into our normal, we want the disabled and normal to be the only one, only two that loop. So hover, pressed, and selected. We're going to disable the loop time on them. 
and also while we're here we might as well uh, go back into our side button have the disabled go back into disabled animation and have disabled and go back in and then add a property button interactable and then turn that off so now the button if you disable it won't be able to be interacted with now this button here if we click play just to test to make sure the button works oh yeah never mind we need to change the animation so if I double click normal button controller here now same here before I'm going to drag this here the any state I'm going to drag here hover here selected here disabled here pressed here and then what we're going to do is make a transition there right click make the transition then click normally now on here what I want to do is on the normal I want to go to settings no zero and then on here oh yeah we don't add we don't have any parameters do we so I'm going to create some parameters trigger normal trigger highlighted pressed disabled and selected and now we can go on here and then click normal parameter here and this one here we'll just get rid of now in here same disable zero create that that is pressed same here this is this is uh, disabled turn that off zero this is selected so we need to add selected onto here selected zero no fixed duration here as well we want it to be hover so highlighted no duration zero now we're going to pressed pressed I already did pressed so I've done this one this one this one this one now if we go back into our game and then click play you notice it stays selected and that's because uh, just the way it works but if you hover over it you notice it brings up the other thing and then hovers you can click and our animations are done here as well now what I almost going to do is in my other project I have two images Um, I'm just going to drag them into UI for now and I have a normal basic image I have a blurred image and I have a normal image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the normal image onto the scene, and then I'm going to. What I'm going to do? I'm not going to just drag it onto the scene. Right click, UI image, and then what I'm going to do is for this image, the source sprite I'm going to have is normal. And now. I keep messing this up. I believe I do keep messing this up. Uh, I'm going to create a there we are so I want it because this is going to be where the camera sees so basically it's a normal image I'm going to normal basic image additional settings I do believe actually no I know uh, I keep messing that up so what I'm gonna do is yes it is in the main is in the main canvas UI and I'm gonna create an image did I just create I did a create an image what's that little T I see right there oh I don't know Gonna focus the focus the canvas. I, I did get it right in the first place. 
I'm gonna have the normal image here and then I'm gonna set it here to set native size and then I'm also going to expand that a bit more so actually where's the canvas is the camera yeah the canvas is too big what I'm gonna do is no I think that's fine and the image is gonna be stretched it's basically meet the canvas this is I'm just gonna sit in there why did it just ping off like that now this image I'm gonna have at the top of the canvas so all the stuff's on top of it now as you can see we've got a lovely background here it's fantastic it's lovely and this is going to be called the so let's change it normal bg image now this normal image is going to be replaced by the world later on when we create a world but for now i'm just using this image i found on the internet i have no rights to this image right below now in this blurred image I'm just going to duplicate this, put it underneath, and this is going to be the blurred background image. And now this blurred one, I'm going to put the blurred on it. So, what basically happens is this blurred image is what we're going to use in the future. This one here is not going to be. So this blurred image, what you want to do is you want to take a picture. Uh, from where your camera is or you, what you could do is you could just disable the UI here and then uh, run run the game print screen it close off the game and then re enable this and then you can blur the image yourself and basically what we're going to do is this image here this blurred image is going to fade so this colour, what I'm going to do is we're going to change the alpha of this colour to fade slowly to reveal this behind it. As you can see, because it's the same image but one's blurred and one's not, it looks seamless. It looks like this image here is de-blurring. When in retrospect, it's actually two different images. One's blurred, one's not. One's just the alpha and it's being turned off. So I believe this will be it for this video. I think this video has gone on way long enough. Uh, the next video we're going to do new game. Then after that we're going to do the achievements. Then we're going to do the settings. And also at the beginning of the next tutorial we are going to create it. So when you load up the game, this image here, uh, alpha goes from 1 to 0 which reveals the clean image behind but already if you put an image behind you can already see that it's looking a lot better we've got two types of buttons we'll be using this button more in the future and we'll be using this one here as well so these are going to come in handy now we've actually got them thank you all for watching i'm a t junkie and I look forward to seeing you in the next video goodbye